I've always loved aerospace since I was a little kid. When I was nine, though, I, I couldn't quite build a, a fighter jet. I could build a drone, though. When I was younger, I thought I would be building drones for different end users, and uh, October 1 definitely did change my thinking on that. It was eight years ago today that we lost numerous lives at the Route 91 Music Har Harvest Festival. Gunfire rings out from the Mandalay Bay. 60 lives taken and a community forever changed when a lone gunman opened fire from above on the Route 91 Music Festival. I knew people that were along the strip during that shooting. That's what got me thinking that like maybe this technology that I, I loved uh, could have a place in the hands of first responders to, to save lives during events like that. After October 1, I, I cold called the uh, captain lieutenant of Las Vegas' SWAT team. They agreed to have lunch like 18-year-old me. We, we talked a lot about what happened uh, during the shooting, but then the conversation broadened to the rest of their jobs. High-risk warrant searches and barricades and hostage rescue missions they have to deal with on a daily basis. I thought if they just had a way to get eyes and ears in dangerous places, that that would be a capability that would save lives for them regularly, like in the context of active shooter response, but uh, also in the context of the rest of their jobs. And I thought I could build that. We build drones that are public safety specific. They have red and blue lights, siren, they have public safety markings, and they have the ability to deliver life-saving payloads in critical emergencies. We are building drones that can clear calls for service without having to send ground units. Drones as a first responder can deliver life-saving payloads before the officer even arrives on scene. It could be Narcan, it can be a flotation device, it can be an EpiPen, it can be a bottle of water to a stranded hiker out on a trail. It's about bridging that gap from when that call comes in to the officers arriving on scene. It's not about getting drones quickly on scene, it's about getting officers quickly on scene so that they know what's happening before they arrive. Yeah, we partner incredibly closely with, with our customers. I think from the engineering point of view, we try to make sure there's no layers between our customer and, and the engineers. They're on site for installations, they have direct conversations with our end users, um, they're on support channels, support calls, so we just try to minimize the delta between our customers and our engineering team. We partner with our customers, our public safety entities, at, early in the process, so at the architectural phase, not just at the end when we're trying to explain the product we've built and how they should use it uh, much earlier in the process. So what do you need? What are the features you want? Hey, try this feature we're prototyping. What do you think? What's your feedback? So it's, it's more of an end-to-end -end partnership from you know, inception, concept, all the way to implementation and how is it going in the field once it's deployed. And we're building something that's actually useful, that our, that our officers, that our customers are actually going to use in a diff difficult emergency situation. And I think that's really motivating. We don't want to build something that's just going to be put on the shelf you know, three months from now, six months from now. We want something that's going to have a lasting impact that might save a life. Uh, and that's, that's, I think, at its core why a lot of people are here at Brink. We're seeing a turning point in law enforcement. Now, with drone as a first responder, the expectation is that officers have real-time information that is updated before they arrive on scene. They can see, either via their computer or their cell phone, what is happening before they arrive. Just recently, a police agency in California responded to a call for service of a man with a knife that's threatening community members. With the drone, they were able to quickly identify and locate this individual, respond appropriately, and take this individual into custody with minimal force. In New York, there was a shooting call. The drone was deployed, and as it was searching the area, it located a handgun that had been thrown on top of a rooftop. Officers were able to retrieve that handgun and remove it from the community. This provides a situational awareness and safer for the officer and the community. Drones are an incredibly powerful and useful technology, but there, there is a concern sometimes from communities that uh, drones represent like a surveillance state or, or Big Brother, and we, we really didn't want that to get in the way of uh, communities adopting this technology that we think can be so beneficial. We thought very carefully about what we had to build from a technical perspective uh, to make it easy for you know communities to get comfortable with uh, DFR systems. That resulted in features like our public transparency dashboard where agencies can publish a high level program statistics about their drone programs. They can also show granular flight path data uh, of each one of the flights that their drones execute. So if someone sees a drone 
flying over their house, they could add a location filter and a time filter, and then through a CAD integration, see the purpose of that flight. Uh, that's just the start. We definitely thought about this a lot. Emergency response is one of the most complicated environments you can just deploy a drone or any product into. The mentality of the engineering team is that the drone that we provide customers on day one is not going to be the same drone that they're using a year from now. We're going to make sure that every time they encounter a new, new situation, a new environment, a new challenge, we're going to immediately take that feedback and we're going to apply it to the product in the field. We're going to push new software updates. We're going to roll in new hardware changes and that we're really going to keep that product as up-to-date as possible. We're going to be right there with them every step of the way, making sure that our product is working for them. The core thing that I want people to understand about our mission to save lives is just sort of how our technology does it. Today, we are the second largest quadcopter manufacturer in America uh, and the world's largest public safety drone company. Public safety is our entire universe. And that level of focus allows us to, to build first responders actually the right tools with all of the industry-specific features that they need to save lives.